Alright, so this is going to be a video about how to create uh, somewhat realistic mock-ups using a wood grain, grain background and attempt to approximate stain colors to help me choose what stains I'm going to use as well as to help me take an intricate design and keep it a bit realistic. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video, uh, so I apologize about that, but I've only got half a beer, so it cannot go on forever. So first, this video is brought to you by the Cornhole Collective. We don't have sponsors, but we do have a Facebook group. And so far we've got a small collective of builders that are continuing the conversations that we started on YouTube. And it has taken off and going really well. Uh, one of the recent posts you're going to see is Scott. He is talking about uh, how I got the smelly end of the stick on a collaboration that we're doing. So basically he uh, asked me if I could do the staining on a set that he designed. Um, he was nice enough to go ahead and design this and send it to the customer and the customer approved it. And uh, so now I've got to figure out how in the world we are going to do this with stains. So I'm going to take you through that. So thank you so much for that, Scott. All right, so Scott sent over uh, a couple images. Uh, it turns out, um, so first this is the mock-up, so I will try to have that to help reference off of. And he uh, was able to create that just from three images. So I've got these here. Before I get started, I wanna show you a quick tip for finding decent images just to help with, start out with creating your design. So uh, I think most people have heard of this website, Google, and you can type in what you're searching for and click images and you end up with uh, images that relate to that. So uh, from here, some people are unaware of a little trick you can do. So once you click on your image, if you hover over it, you're gonna see the size. So the size here is in pixels. Uh, a good resolution image is typically uh, about 300 DPI. Uh, that's dots per inch. So this is 800 by 867, which is uh, a little less than three inches. So if you were to stretch this over a two foot by four foot board, it's gonna get pretty pixelated and pretty terrible pretty fast. So a little tip is to go to the tools at the top and you can sort by size and go to large. If you do that, you tend to get the larger images first. Click on one and hover over top of it and you can see here the resolution is significantly higher. So starting out with a high resolution JPEG is gonna really help. Uh, create a, a pretty good product. So, all right, so we're gonna dive in. So I'm gonna be using Photoshop. Photoshop is a very uh, powerful photo editing pro uh, program that is overkill for cornhole. So I'm definitely not suggesting that anyone go out and learn Photoshop. Uh, it's gonna do this really well. Uh, it's got some tools that other programs don't have and I just happened to know this before I started cornhole. So that's the reason I use it. I would say that you could do something very similar uh, in other programs and I'll kind of cover the minor feature that you would use to uh, to accomplish the same thing in another program however this one I'm gonna go through a little additional headache to ensure that I come even closer on my same colors to get a better idea but first you can see that I've got this um, wood grain background so that's pretty sick so where in the world did I get that so you can go and Google and find your own wood grain, uh, crop it to two foot by four foot. So uh, that is indeed how big this is. So if you look at my ruler at the top, and it's 300 DPI, which basically means I have a really high resolution background of wood grain. And so if you were gonna stretch a picture over top of this and that picture was bad, you would find out really fast. So to me, that is a really helpful feature. Uh, the very beginning of a mock-up to find out that my images that I'm working with are terrible early on so I can continue finding better ones so uh, anyway so I created this wood grain so how can you get yours go ahead and make your own or there's this website cornholcollective.com it's pretty spectacular you, uh, we have a builder section there uh, just launched the site recently uh, and uh, what is the supplies oh this isn't my wood grain. This is a list of supplies that you need to build epic cornhole boards. So on here, you're going to find, I think, just about everything except for the wood. So uh, if you purchase through these links, it's the same price that you'd normally pay, but it does go uh, to support the channel. Uh, they give us uh, a little a little thank you for every purchase. So even if you don't buy the product that's on these links uh, and just buy something else, 
um, just because you got to Amazon through these links, it still supports us. So uh, we appreciate any support you're able to provide. Um, also, oh, that's weird. I clicked on the wrong button again. We've got these awesome t-shirts. I uh, happen to be wearing one of these. They're, God, it's good looking and it feels good. Um, but anyway, to be serious though, if you were to just navigate over to the store, uh, we have a couple products in there. As you can tell, my computer is super powerful and screen recording doesn't slow it down at all. So if you're going to the store, we got some pretty fancy schmancy stickers here and we've got a few things that we're referring to as an image pack. So uh, you can already see the wood mock-up layout pattern that I've got. Uh, other ones included on here are going to be American flags. Uh, turns out nobody can agree on where that union should be. So depending on how you're going to use it, we have provided uh, two different layouts. And in here we include things like a 300 DPI JPEG. So that's going to be a very high resolution JPEG if you're going to use it, and edit it, and make your own uh, image on top of that. Uh, or I've got an SVG, which is a vector that is ready to cut. You can just drop straight into your cut program. So uh, it's kind of a helpful tool that people have been enjoying. Uh, along with that, we have the iconic Iwo Jima image, kind of the same features there. Um, this one, instead of being a JPEG, is going to be a PNG. Uh, PNG is a photo format that has a clear background. So you'd be able to take this, for example, and put it on top of that American flag. And the American flag would be right behind those uh, soldiers there. So also, uh, we've included an editable file uh, for whole text. So basically, you can download this and you'd be able to edit the text, edit the circles, make them smaller, larger, thicker, uh, remove the text, whatever you'd like to do, and then you can add that to your uh, cut program to uh, have text. But what we're going to be using is this wood pattern layout. So it also is going to be a PNG format. So uh, you can put on any color background you want. The white background here doesn't actually exist. Um, and like I said, it's 300 DPI, 24 by 48. The six inch hole is in the right spot. So it's gonna really help you lay out your graphics in the right spot. You can actually even just drop this straight into your cut program to help organize your images to help you cut it out. So anyway, we have those uh, for sale, uh, easy downloads um, just to support our channel. So I'm gonna be working with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. Thank you all for letting me digress there for a moment. Um, so here we are. check out our mock-up that Scott created for me and figure out um, what we're gonna do. So looking at this realistically, uh, uh, you can ignore the resolution here, but we've got ourselves a pretty intricate silhouette. Uh, we have a little mountain that seems to go on and on forever with too many layers. Uh, it's gonna be quite challenging. Now we have shadows within the sign and shadows behind the poles, which are all just a little too complex uh, for it's kind of a realistic price point for wood stain design. So I'm gonna just try to work with that and see what I can do and simplify it and make it more feasible. So he's given me the three images to save you the time. Uh, I have dropped those in already. So we have the desert background. And uh, again, it's like a few too many layers on that, but I'm gonna trim that down. I've got the sign. Um, the sign I have already edited uh, beforehand uh, and simplified and removed some shadows. I uh, just didn't want this video to go on terribly long. And then I have the silhouette of the desert that the customer would like. So basically, uh, this is the layout that we want to come close to what Scott made. And I think we are close enough to just dive in and get going to it. So it's not exactly the same, but Scott should have made it easier for me if he wanted to come exactly the same. So anyway, we've got this. Um, so what I'm planning on doing with the desert is I want to remove this mountain. So I'm just going to um, just make some simple changes here. So the way I tend to edit is I will color match. So I'm just color matching uh, the wrong mountain. Let's see, I'm going to color match that mountain because it will stay. And I'm going to have this one blend in with it. So I'm just going to grab the paintbrush. Click on it in Photoshop. You have to actually click on the layer that you're editing. So, my bad. So, again, we're going to match this mountain by coloring this one. So, I'm just going to click on that. 
And so now I have simplified that by removing a couple layers. So it's a pretty subtle difference, but it is a pretty significant uh, labor reduction there. Right, so we're gonna remove this mountain and this one since they are just not really showing off, not adding much to it, but they are adding a lot of complexity to how it would be to stain it. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna color match. I'm going to have this blend in with it. Alright. So, got myself a pretty simplified layout. Um, then I'm going to just try to crop these to fit my boards. But before I do, this is kind of where I have another program um, the feature would come in. So it's not going to look anything like this. However, if you were to find the opacity option on your program and you just lower that opacity then it lets the wood grain shine through so you can kind of make it look a little bit like wood stain so um, so there's a little idea of how that works so I'm gonna use that opacity option myself and I'm actually going to erase some portions that aren't gonna be there in the final version so just to help me out I'm going to put the hole in the wood as well. I'm going to do the same thing for Joshua trees. Alright, it doesn't really have to be like crazy exact. I'm just trying to give ourselves an idea of what's invisible on the wood. show you how complex uh, what I'm going to do is. So I had some images already prepped that I'm going to get rid of. So my computer is running slower with a different screen recording software. So this is I guess, reasonably acceptable. So I'm going to leave my Joshua tree on top. Um, I'm going to leave it as black because my plan here is actually I'm going to do black stain. So with the black stain, I'm sorry, not black stain, black paint. Um, that way it's going to be super bold in the front. Um, and then I'm going to try to start working in some natural stain colors here in the back. So uh, I've decided I am going to keep my sky uh, natural color uh, unstained. So I'm going to remove it. Photoshop, if you ever select, uh, you have to just select an actual image layer, you go to select color range, and just select a certain color. So everything that's visible with this color blue that I just did, I'll kind of show you here what all of that might be. Just gonna select just that visible amount of blue. All right, so the screen recording software is bogging down the computer a little too much to show you all this in real time. So over here, you're gonna see I have some new layers that I created by doing a color selection. So if you actually use Photoshop, then what I'm doing is hitting select color range, and then I'm just selecting a color, and it's gonna select it all. Uh, whenever you do that, basically, the end result is that you would have this. It is just selected the color, and what I end up doing is coming down here and adding a layer. This is an adjustment layer where then I can add different types of adjustment layers. So the two I tend to use are brightness and contrast and curves. So I'll show you what those do and what it is I'm doing with them. So um, right now I am set up. I've got my mock-up uh, kind of laid out. And I have got uh, everything I need in place. 
face so we can start adjusting this and make it look like stain color. So I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit so I can pull up like a reference window. So I'm gonna open up some previous work of mine uh, using my Instagram. Uh, right here is like actually a really beneficial post that we did. Um, so this is something that Scott stained uh, using these four colors. So we have Java, which is gonna be this really dark, nice brown. We've got Georgian Cherry, which is this nice reddish color. We have Candlelight, which was this one. And then we have Nutmeg, which is this background. Um, so I do believe I'm gonna use all these colors. Uh, I use pretty much just only general finish products. So uh, they have a great color range and I'm gonna try to see how I can use those in this. So I'm gonna have that up here just as a reference. So um, deselect that. So what I'm gonna do uh, currently is I'm just gonna turn off these layers so I can just see my wood. And so basically what I've got uh, with these adjustment layers is I've adjusted a certain portion of the screen. So right here are the signposts. So uh, this is a brightness contrast. So that means whenever I click on brightness, it is gonna be darkening a certain portion of the screen, which is where the signpost was. So I'm gonna be mimicking uh, Java for this one. So this is darkening my wood and I'm going for something over here like that color and as you can see it's not you know, somehow the brightness went all the way up so as you can see not that it's nowhere near dark enough so I'm going to try to make another one of those layers and darken it down even more all right so now we're getting pretty close See the wood grain through it a little bit. It's nice and dark brown. I think I'm pretty close there. So if I really need to, I can turn back on layers to kind of reference where I am, but it doesn't really do much good. So I'm gonna work without those for now. So I've got my sign posted. Uh, the next thing is the background of the sign. So um, if I open my sign back up, that area here is gonna be around this. So that is a white area. And I am gonna actually use a white gel stain. Uh, General Finish has recently came out with that and I haven't got to use it. I think it's going to be pretty freaking awesome, so I'm going to do it. So again, uh, I've got another brightness layer, so I'm going to get rid of the sign. And what I'm going to do to mimic that, uh, unfortunately I don't have anything to show a test of, is I'm just going to lighten it up. It's not going to be like a solid white, it's just going to kind of lighten the greens a bit. Uh, it's not going to be really significant, so I think that's going to be pretty close to it. So I'm good there. So then the next zone I'm going to open up is going to be my reddish colors. So um, even though in this, um, I, I, the, this is red, I'm not planning on doing that red. Uh, there's just not enough red from general finishes to really fill that in. So I think I'm going to do the reds from this sign and the front mountain in this uh, Georgian cherry. So close that back down. I've got these. So uh, I'm going to Okay, so I just did two curved layers. That's not very helpful. Let me get that selection back real fast. All right, so I'm going to do one more bright contrast. I'm going to darken it down a bit. I think it's going to be pretty dark. And then, as you can see, this is all brown. So I use curves. Curves. So you have the red, green, blue, and you can adjust it down and, and adjust those three colors at once, which I don't know, isn't really helpful for me, but if I make a selection, I can actually adjust the individual colors. So basically I've darkened this down and I've got myself a, a brown going. I can click on it, I can just kind of ramp up the red to kind of give it a bit of a reddish tint. And then I can kind of play with green and blue, and if I remove them a little bit, it kind of alters the colors a bit more. I don't know uh, what I'm really doing here. I'm not like an expert, so I just kind of keep playing with it. Uh, right now I can tell it's definitely just a little too light. Like it's nowhere near this over here. So uh, for me, um, it's not always important to be exact. However, I'm planning on doing like five or six different shades of stain. So I really want to make sure that I'm coming pretty close here 
with a coloring. Uh, so this is way more in depth than I would go for a normal markup. Uh, this is just to help me decide whether these stain colors can be possible with each other. So, um, so I've reselected that. I'm going to do another brightness and contrast layer so I can darken down even more since I already maxed that out. And let's see. All right, so that's kind of getting dark enough, but it's not red enough anymore. That's kind of getting in the neighborhood. It's not, I'm not perfect, so it's about as good as I can go. So then we get this candle like color. A little sample in the box is not quite, or the can isn't quite the way it came out, but it's a bit of an orangish color. So uh, I've got myself um, curves and brightness and contrast. So I'm going to darken it a little bit because it's going to be like a darker orangish color. So we'll darken that down and then. Start playing with the coloring a little bit, so I tend to just darken them all a little bit. It seems to give myself a little bit of an orange, and then um, to kind of create orange, I want to adjust yellow. Yellow is the opposite of blue, so if I dial down the blue, it kind of brings in a little bit of yellow. And then if I go, you can see it's like kind of this gross green. I think if I dial down the green a little bit, I should get rid of that. It's kind of looking orangey. Ramp up the red a little bit. It's going to kind of make it a bit more orangey. And then it's just a little light, but it's kind of in the right color area. So I'm going to swap back to my brightness contrast. Alright. So I'm going to enhance the red here, so I'm probably going to drop that back out. nutmeg is nice but it's a little too close to this uh, prairie wheat uh, it's probably gonna be in that same general range so I, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is try to lighten that up to get myself some more contrast uh, to be light enough to be next to this color but just to have that crisp line so what I think I'm gonna do is take new pine new pines a pretty light color that you can't really see uh, by itself too much. I'm going to add it to prairie wheat, uh, which is really similar to this color, but it's going to lighten it down quite a bit. So um, I don't really have a good example of that, uh, except maybe the end result of this one, because on this set of boards, it didn't quite take well, but you can't see that. So I'm uh, going to use that. So we're going to go back to the prairie wheat. So with that, you're just going to drop the curve down just a hair. It's going to be a little bit of a darkening. And then Alright. Might darken on top of that. Alright, so I think that's about the 
lightness brightness that I'm going for, but that is not anywhere near the color. So it is a much more yellow color than that. Um, I can find a bold one just to reference off of. Um, that was copyrighted, which is going to be great for a video. So uh, this is actually prairie wheat right here. So I will use that as a reference. So I can just dial down the blue, it should make it a little bit more yellow. Now I got a nice little diary of green. Should be able to get that out. rich dark red that is not dark recently uh, one of them was apparently taken down huh that sucks yeah, the Coachella set seems to be taken down that's fun all right so after Coachella I also did it on this set so you can see the bold black lines in here uh, we're done with spray paint. I also did the text here uh, to kind of give us like a really uh, nice pop. And then I'm going to have Georgian Cherry Candlelight, probably a little hybrid of Prairie Wheat with New Pine. And this is going to be Georgian Cherry. This should be Java here, which will contrast nicely with all of these colors. And then I will do a white gel stain here, which will lighten up the sign and give it an additional layer and then these circles here are going to be uh, natural wood which should match this background so I think we've got ourselves one two three four five six shades of stain or paint and then raw wood so seven total layers should be a fun time all right we'll see if we can make that happen 